Welcome to Punky's World. This is the retro wrestling recap of Super Brawl 3. Took place in Asheville, North Carolina. <coughs> Not sure of the date. Started out with Max Payne playing the national anthem on his electric guitar. It was amazing. Um, the first match was the Hollywood Blondes versus Eric Watts and Marcus Bagwell. The Hollywood Blondes won. It, that was definitely a good match. Um, they kind of had to carry Bagwell and Watts a little bit because they were green. But they carried them to a decent match. Um, Too Cold Scorpio versus Benoit was an outstanding match. Scorpio won. It's just something about him I don't like. He just seems seems to me, always seemed to me to have an attitude, and I could be wrong. I could just be projecting something, um, but he always seemed to have this, this look of attitude, even as a baby face. I just, and I've heard a couple of interviews with him, I just don't care for him. And I don't care what color he is, just for the record. If he was white, I wouldn't like him. Um, and again, that was a great match. Davy Boy Smith versus Bill Irwin, that was a, basically a squash. Um, Davy won, of course. Um, Cactus Jack versus Paul Orndorff, Falls Count Anywhere. That was not actually a terrible match. Um, it was decent, for sure. Um, I wouldn't say it was, you know, an all-time great match, but... <coughs> it definitely qualified as decent. Um, and Cat's Jack won, of course, when he knocked him out with the shovel. Um, the Rock and Roll Express versus the Heavenly Bodies. Oh, geez. I forgot to write the S on bodies. <laughs> um, r and r won by DQ. I assume Cornette got involved. Um, but I actually walked out of the room expecting the match to continue and when I came back the next match was starting so I apologize for that. Um, either that or Bobby Eaton came back out and interfered. Bobby Eaton was out with them originally and they made him go back to the locker room. Um, then it was Dustin Rhodes versus Max Payne for the United States Championship. Um, <coughs> it was actually a decent match until uh, Dustin had him in an abdominal stretch and he like pushed the referee or something and got himself disqualified because he didn't want to tap out or whatever. Not that anybody would tap out of an abdominal stretch, just saying. So it was, it was a stupid ending, in my opinion. <laughs> <coughs> For what was, you know, a good match. Um, I think Max Payne or Man Mountain Rock, as he was known in the World Wrestling Federation, is a little underrated because he actually has multiple amateur awards. Um, so he is a fabulous wrestler. <coughs> um, and a really nice guy, by the way, and I'll get more into that at the end when I talk about my notes. Barry Windham versus the Great Muda for the NWA Championship. At this time, they still had control of the NWA Championship, plus WCW had made their own championship. Eventually, the NWA took the championship back, or they, no, they stopped paying dues to the NWA, so the NWA took the championship back. Um, but this is when they had both titles. Barry Windham, Versus, like I said, the Great Muda. This match was great. I mean, it was just <coughs> awesome. It seemed to me the fans didn't know who to cheer for. Of course, it happened that way in the in the match with um, Pillman and Austin, the Hollywood Blondes, versus Bagwell and Watts. Um, and it was funny because, well, on the call were Tony Schiavone and, um, 
Jesse Ventura. And Jesse Ventura said, why do they boo every time Bag uh, not Bagwell, girl screech for Bagwell, please. Um, <laughs> not my type. Not that he wasn't handsome, but he's overbuilt. Um, he was handsome back then, but overbuilt for, for my liking. Um, why do they boo every time Watts comes in? And Shivani says, well, maybe they're saying, ooh. No, they were saying, boo. <laughs> but he had to save it because they were the baby face team, you know? The baby face team. But yeah, they were booing. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it had to do with his dad. I really don't know. Because his dad, excuse me, Cowboy Bill Watts was the boss at the time. So, um, that could be. Anyway, um, but in the, the Dustin Payne match, it seemed to me that the people didn't really know who to cheer for, and they weren't really cheering for either one of them. They didn't seem to be into the match, even though I thought it was a good match. Um, Barry Windham. Oh no, not that one. I'm sorry. The Barry Windham Muda match. They didn't seem to know who to cheer for. They wanted to boo Barry, but they wanted to cheer him, if that makes sense. So he got a little reaction either way coming out. And it's funny because, and they did cheer Muda coming out, but during the match, they didn't seem to know who to cheer for. So the fan reaction to the match wasn't great, even though the match was phenomenal. Um, and Barry Windham became the new NWA champion. Um, and I think that uh, Nick actually had a good idea to spotlight this particular show, given that Barry became the NWA World Heavyweight Champion on this show and his current status of being in the hospital after a massive heart attack. Um, I guess he's out of ICU now. And um, <coughs> Bray Wyatt, a.k.a. Wyndham Rotunda, gave that update. He also thanked the man a Mr. Lalek, um, I can't remember the first name, but Steve Lalek, is that what it was? Ugh, hope I'm right, um, for doing CPR when Barry went down in front of him. He was just a citizen, just an ordinary citizen that saw this man go down in front of him and did CPR and saved his life. He was without a heartbeat for between 10 and 20 minutes. So that that's the update, and it goes along with this, so... Next, we have Vader versus Sting. Before I go into this match, I want to say that <laughs> I was sad during a lot of the show. There was a lot of emotion for me because <clears throat> so many of the guys are gone, you know? Barry's still in very serious condition. Um, Vader's gone. Harley Race is gone. Um... <sighs> Trying to think, who else that was there is gone. Um, oh, they talked about Rick Rude because he couldn't wrestle for some reason. He's gone. Um, somebody else was gone too. Uh, Davy Boy's gone. Paul Wonder's gone. Uh, it's it's. Uh, Pillman's gone. So it was sad. Um, anyway, Vader won what was a bloody brawl. It was a hard-hitting... <coughs> if you like the kind of match, you know? It's not my style, but Vader's an excellent... was an excellent athlete. Sting... He's an excellent athlete, and I think that they made it the best match that they could, you know, as far as having a match strapped to each other. Because <laughs> remember, this was a White Castle of Fear strap match. Um, huh. 
I don't know what the White Castle of Fear was supposed to be about, but. <coughs> because it didn't make sense. It was a leather strap match. Um, back then and earlier, they had these matches. They're called gimmick matches, where they have some kind of gimmick or device involved or um, special stipulation, that sort of thing. And so um, what was I going to say? They call it a gimmick match. Um, and they had several of them back then. They still have like steel cage matches and Hell in a Cell matches and those types of things. Those are all, you know, tables, tables, ladders, and chairs. The money to make ladder match, they're all what are called gimmick matches. There's some sort of gimmick to the match and some sort of extra device usually used in it. Um, so in this case, it was a leather strap strapped to each of their wrists. That makes it difficult. Um, they have dog collar matches, chain matches, like a Russian chain match, where you'd have it, I think you'd have the chain around your wrist instead of your neck. Um, they have the Texas bull rope match, which is literally a thick, heavy bull rope with a cowbell in the middle. <laughs> so they had some... I haven't seen a Texas bull rope match in a long time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Then, of course, they have I quit matches. And, um, and I will not be recapping Starcade 85 because that steel cage I quit match between Tully Blanchard and... Magnum TA was one of the most gruesome things I've ever seen in my life. And I don't want to watch it again. Um, but Vader won. Barely. <laughs> um, <coughs> now for my notes. I like doing it this way. Missy Hyatt tried to get an interview with Ric Flair because Ric Flair was returning that night. And he actually did commentary on the Barry Windham match. He went in and strapped the belt around Barry's waist and all of it. Um, she was actually very entertaining throughout. They would go up to a stage in the back of the arena where she was with a very young Eric Bischoff and Johnny be bad. He's a bad man. Johnny be bad. He looks like little Richard. <laughs> That's his theme song. Oh, my God. Well, I'm certainly going to laugh at myself later. But anyway, um, again, as I mentioned, um, when Max Payne was Man Mountain Rock in uh, the World Wrestling Federation, I actually met him. He was an attraction um, because they would send certain stars to like Killer Kowalski's shows um, to entice people to buy tickets, you know? And he was there, and of course, King Kong Bundy was there. And um, I met them both, and um, in Mountain Rock was so sweet and so kind. Um, I mean, so was Bundy. Bundy's big old body housed a big old heart. Um, so. <coughs> and he actually does play that guitar. And he talked to us about it because he had it with him, you know, and uh, my friend and I. And he wasn't at the table. He bailed out it. I was literally right down the street from my house. If you go on other videos, you'll see the field. Um, Ricky and Robert, and I, I noticed it um, during their match. Ricky was 
doing this here. They talk to each other in sign language, which I know, I want to say it was Jim Ross that mentioned it at one time. Um, <coughs> and they do that because, well, Robert taught Ricky to sign. Robert's signed all his life because both of his parents are deaf. Um, so he taught Ricky to sign. And they use it because nobody understands their communication. And I saw Ricky make some letters and say, do, say something to Robert, and Robert tagged him. So I don't know if he was writing T-A-G or what he was doing. I think a G is like this. But I don't know what he was doing because he did it fast. But um, um I think Barry Windham and Great Muda were my favorite match of the night. Five stars as far as I'm concerned. Um, again, Missy Hyatt was hilarious. Trying to get the interview with Ric Flair and getting patted down uh, by his security and her microphone taken away from her. And she's like, that belongs to WCW. They'll charge me for that. And then they put her up against the limo and they're patting her down. And she said, I usually get kissed when someone does this to me. <laughs> It was so entertaining. She was actually really good on that show. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, hmm. So, yeah. I think, oh, I wanted to mention the Heavenly Bodies. In this case, were Stan Lane and Dr. Tom Pritchard. Um... He, they were the original Heavenly Bodies. Stan retired, and the Heavenly Bodies became Tom Pritchard and Jimmy Del Rey, who has also passed away. Um, oh, and Bobby has passed away. And he was there. So yeah, Bobby passed away this year. So that was horrendous. <laughs> you know, as, as someone who knows the family, you know, it's horrendous. And knowing that they lost their mother just months before their father died. It's like, are you kidding me? And their poor grandfather. You know, he's lost his daughter and his son-in-law. You know, within a span of months. His son-in-law that he truly loved. Um, Bobby's father-in-law, for those who don't know, is Superstar Bill Dundee. Or was. Um, and he's still alive. He's in his 70s, I believe. Um, <clears throat> great wrestler in his own right. And him and Lawler are booked, but boy, did they book differently. <laughs> uh, because they tended to book the guys that they liked to watch at different, you know, places on the card <clears throat> from each other, shall we say. And, um, so this is according to Jim Cornette. And Jim Cornette's that's usually pretty accurate. This is actually moving much faster today. So that could be a good sign for the checks. Um, I don't know why checking it took so damn long. They never did. So I deleted it and I figured I'd start over today. Because it was 7.30 at night and I still hadn't done anything. And I'm like, oh, this is not good. And I've uploaded, you know, two videos in that time. And because I did upload one to Kid Missing yesterday, which was a silver alert for a 77 and 94 year old couple. What's strange about that is you see that 77 and 94, you assume the woman is 77 and the man is 94. Nope. The woman was 94 and the man was 77. I'm like, that's weird. You know, I know of couples where the woman is older, but not usually that much older. So, I mean, she's almost old enough to be the dude's mother. She's 17 years older than him, so technically she is. But, wow. Yeah, that surprised me. Like I said, usually it's the other way around when there's that significant an age difference because women mature faster than men do. 
So to have an age difference that significant and have the woman be the older partner, I mean, yes, I've seen women 10 years older than their men. In fact, I have a friend who's, I think she's either 12 or 14 years older than her husband. That's unusual. They make a terrific couple though. Um, he's a veteran. You know, he went in right out of high school. So he gained a lot of maturity that way. <coughs> and he was in while, while they were dating and when they got married. So, you know, that makes sense. Um, and I know other couples where the woman is like two years older. Like my other daddy. His wife is two years older than him. You know? Um, well, about two and a half. No, I'm sorry, about a year and a half because his birthday is in January and they'll be two years apart from his birthday to her birthday. Then there'll be three. So yeah, it's going to be two and a half. Anyway, I believe her birthday is closer to the end of the year. Anyway, they'll be 79 and 82 next year. So does it really matter? I mean, you know, it didn't matter then. <laughs> so why should it matter now? 50, blah, 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 six or seven years ago. So. <clears throat> and my point is, that just struck me when I saw this. Wait a minute, the woman's 94? So, but they are missing. They're missing from Webster, Massachusetts, which is the next town over from me. Um, but it's the furthest away next town over from me, if that makes sense. I have several towns around me that are neighboring towns that are next town over, so to speak. But that's probably the furthest distance because you have Oxbridge and Whitensville that are like two minutes away. Um, and Sutton, it's like two minutes away. Well, Manchog. So it's the furthest distance because you have to go through the backwoods of town to get there. Um, it's still, you know, a neighboring town. It still borders us. And so, and I'm probably missing others that border us. Did I get them all? I'm not sure. Sutton, Oxbridge, Whitensville. Webster. Hmm. I feel like I'm missing something. Well, Rhode Island borders us. Um, Rhode Island is a state in the New England region of the Northeast of the United States. Oh my God. Alexa! Stop! I didn't ask her a damn thing about Rhode Island. But anyway, I'm trying to think of. I know I'm missing a town. Um, but anyway, so, yeah. Oh, Connecticut borders us, too. <laughs> um, in New York, and above us is New Hampshire and Vermont. But bordering my town would be Connecticut, Rhode Island, and those towns that I mentioned. Um, what borders us to the to the north? That I can't think of it. Let me look, guys. Now I'm curious. Towns that B O A U E R. Okay. Oh, okay, Oxford does border us. Oxford and Sutton are in the north. Okay, that's what I missed, Oxford. I was thinking Oxford, but I couldn't remember. I thought it bordered us, but I 
couldn't remember. It, it shares a border with us and Sutton, which is what I thought. Um, not that you care, but I just wanted to note that that couple is missing and that it's important, you know. Um, they were seen in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, which is a suburb of Worcester. We're not considered a suburb because we're too many towns away. Um, we're a rural area, um, a small town, 30 minutes outside of the city, and um, in good traffic. Um, actually, if there's no traffic at all, you might make it to Worcester in 20 minutes. If you're in an ambulance, the sirens going, you might make it in 15. But anyway, um, the average is 30. <coughs> because believe me, you're not going to hit good traffic. Um, what was I saying? Oh. And they were last seen, well, in two places. It was seen in Shrewsbury asking how to get home around 6.10 on Tuesday evening. How to get back to Webster, which means they were confused. Because they should have been able to get back to Webster from Shrewsbury. Although it, did, it would be quite a ride, probably close to a 30 minute ride. Um, and I don't know what they were doing there. Um, <coughs> Shrewsbury is a big town. It's more of a business town. Um, my friend's grandparents, aunt and uncle used to live there. So I'm a little bit, I know a little bit of the, and their parents owned a business there. So I know the area a little bit. Um, there's a great pizza place there too. Um, <laughs> anyway. The next place they were seen was in the middle of the night. Actually, their car was seen, um, which was confirmed by their license plate. Um, uh, in Worcester, in the wee hours of Wednesday morning. I don't know if it's 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock. It was some ridiculous hour that people that age aren't normally up at. Um, section of Chandler and Maine. It's congested. It's busy. It's it's not a place that an elderly couple should want to be. And Worcester is also very confused. Something about low speed again. Anyway, like I said, not a place an elderly couple wants to be, especially in the middle of the night. Uh, I think they went the wrong direction from Shrewsbury and ended up in Worcester and then just got all kinds of turned around. Um, my fear for them is that they either parked their car somewhere, turned on the heat, and died of carbon monoxide because they were trying to stay warm because they didn't know where the hell they were, or conversely, they parked their cars somewhere and froze to death, or broke down somewhere and froze to death. My concerns. It's not so much about foul play, particularly. So, um, that has nothing to do with the wrestling, but I wanted to let you know, um, to remind you because uh, I know a lot of people that watch this are local to me, so, are people I know. Um, so, yeah. Keep your eyes open. The last three letters of their license plate are JVO. So. So, keep a lookout for that. I think the first three are 978. Um. So keep a lookout for that. And they're in a Lincoln Continental. That's a big car. Be hard to hide that. <laughs> Which 
at their ages, I'm not surprised they were driving a boat. Because <laughs> people that age, my father was weird. He liked his little toboggan, as he called it, because he could park it anywhere. Um, but most people that age like their, their big boats. Um, so, yeah. So keep watch for that. Um, I think they said the car was gray. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for listening to me rant about that. That's a, It's important to me and it goes along with my other channel. Um, there is a video on my other channel about the case. Check it out. Um, please subscribe if you're new. Hit that bell for notifications. Remember, you can customize them. And remember, subscription is free. Not many things in this life are free now. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.